طيب ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله والسلام عليه وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى we like to start off on this night of ours by saying to each and every one assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah allah ta'ala he has allowed us to come together upon khair and he has allowed us to come together bihnillahi ta'ala so that we can remind each other of a reality that is true for each and every one of us so bihnillahi ta'ala before actually getting into the talk itself we just want to remind our brothers and our sisters those who are here and those who are listening by way of the internet that bi'idhnillahi ta'ala it is upon you it is upon you each and every one of you to give an nasiha because the deen is an nasiha the deen is the giving of good and sincere advice and as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also had informed us كل ابن ادم خطاء وخير الخطائين الطوابون that all the sons of adam they make mistakes and the best of those who make mistakes are those who make tauba so be that as it may it is possible that there are going to be mistakes that i'm going to make so if you hear a mistake from me i ask you by allah ta'ala to come to me to give to me my error so that i may correct it before i meet my lord so i may correct my mistake and not bring that mistake with me to the akhira instead of my lord with that mistake so bring me my mistake inshallah ta'ala fi dunya in the dunya so i may correct it barakallahu ta'ala fikum so this is i ask all each and every one of you by allah ta'ala this okay so don't let anything slide you to if you hear a mistake then you inform me But if, even though I'm sitting and I'm reading sometimes your eyes play tricks sometimes you read too fast sometimes your tongue slips okay so inform me of my mistake if I were to make a mistake inshallah ta'ala and the tawfiq is from Allah ta'ala na the tawfiq is from Allah ta'ala طيب so inshallah ta'ala we have come and the title of this seminar is death draws near are you ready now this is a question which is tremendous that the death that comes near are you ready because many of us what we fail to realize oh oh it's easy for us to forget a lot of times if there's something in which you're not that enthused about it's easy to forget about it you know like they say out of sight out of mind you make sure you forget about it you don't want to contemplate about it okay but the reality is that there's not a single individual that the soul gets breathed into him except that is going to have to be taken out of him meaning that he is going to have to die there's not a single individual that the soul comes into him except that the soul will leave him so he is going to have to die and this is a reality that is shared with all of us all of us are a little bit closer to death than we were a few seconds ago and this is a reality that we need to understand 
So inshallah ta'ala, because of this reality, we must prepare ourselves for this thing that we're going to have to eventually meet. We can run as best as we try to, but it will catch us. It will catch us eventually. So we need to prepare ourselves for this. So we in the what we have in front of us, one of the things, Yani, because of course we know Allah Ta'ala, He has sent us all that we need to prepare ourselves for meeting Him. Allah Ta'ala, He has sent to us messengers. Allah Ta'ala, He has revealed books. They have come to teach us our religion. The books have been revealed in order to teach us our religion, to prepare us, to prepare us and to give us what we need so that we may be successful in this life and in the akhirah. Now, so we may be successful in this life and in the akhirah. And of course, we know that there are certain things in this dunya that are counterproductive to this goal. There are going to be certain things inside dunya that will harm us and that way delude us from this reality. So inshallah ta'ala, what we want to do is we want to look at some ayat from the book of Allah Ta'ala and then we want to look at the explanation of those ayat from the ulama and from the imma and we want to take it ayah by ayah bel kalima by kalima we want to take it word by word inshallah Ta'ala so this is why if those yani, have a mushaf in front of them be it in Arabic or English or both khair Bring it in front of you, inshallah ta'ala, it will help. And you need a, yani, a pen and a piece of paper, inshallah ta'ala, so that we can go through this. Because what's muhim and what's maqsood, yani, that which is important and that which is uh, incumbent, is that I don't just come here and say some words to entertain you. You know? Like, but rather, we want to take from the kalam of the imma and from the ulama and we want to benefit with it so that inshallah ta'ala we leave here better than when we came we leave here today inshallah better than when we came and if the light ta'ala we come tomorrow and we leave tomorrow better than when we came wahakada inshallah ta'ala and this is what is intended is that we hear the reminder and we benefit from it and we ask that Allah ta'ala he makes us of those people who who they hear a statement and then they follow the best of it inshallah so ta'ala if everyone now would turn to a surah that was revealed in Mecca and this is the most strongest opinion is that this surah it was revealed in Mecca and it is surah at takathur now when the brothers have the, the most half in front of them Please tell me what, what number of surah is this in the, the number of the surah? 102. It's surah 102. Now, nah. wait, it's surah 102. So we want to take a look at this short surah, inshallah ta'ala, and gain the benefit that is contained therein. Because a lot of times we come across these little surah, these little surahs, now, nah. and a lot of times we don't give them their due. Due to their small, due to due to them being small in size, we don't give them their due. We memorize them, we teach them to our children, and then we move on without actually contemplating over the uh, the, the the ayat and, and that that is contained therein. Now there is a hikmah, there is a hikmah, there is a wisdom why Allah Taala He made these sur so little. There is a there is a hikmah on why these on why these surahs. We say surahs with the S and it's not the jama'ah. Nah, it's just the, our Englishization of the word. Huh? There's a reason why Allah Ta'ala made these surahs so little. Or these surahs so little. This is because, yani, as the ulama explains, so that they are accessible to all. Why? Because the meanings that are contained therein are tremendous. This is not to say that the meanings in the bigger surahs are not tremendous, because they are. All of the Quran is khayr. All of the Quran is tremendous. All of the Quran is the kalam of Allah not created. Huh? But in these little surahs, Allah Ta'ala, the, the, the meanings are tremendous and they are accessible to all of us. They are accessible to the children. They are accessible to the common person. So we should look at them. We should look closely to them so that we may understand their meanings. 
Even Sheikh bin Baz ta'ala, he gave his advice to the common Muslims and he said that they should study the meanings of Surah Al-Fatiha and then the meanings of the Surah, of, of, of the surah from Zilzala to Nas because of the, the, the benefit that is contained therein. Because of the benefit and the guidance that is contained therein. So this is one of the surahs that are in that portion in which the Shaykh he said, every Muslim, every Muslim should know about these about these surahs because they will change your life. And this is the nature of the Quran. When you come to the Quran, you, you cannot remain the same. You cannot remain the same. Either you will become better or you will become worse. But you cannot remain the same. So we we ask Allah Ta'ala, He makes us of those who become better, who leave from this majlis and they become better more deep in understanding, more increasing in, 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 in Iman and in Taqwa. وهكذا. So, as we said, we're going to go word by word or phrase by phrase. So Allah Ta'ala, he starts this surah like the other surah and he says what? He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Huh? Allah begins with istaadah. La, it begins with what? But the nasiha for the one reading is that he starts with what? Istaadah, sah? Taib. So Allah Ta'ala starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah Ta'ala says, Al-Haku mutakafur. Naam? Taib. Let us stop here. Let us stop here. We go verse by verse, word by word, phrase by phrase. Khair. So Imam Ibn Jawzi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions inside of his tafsir. He says, Qawluhu Ta'ala, Al-Hakum. Now, Ibn Jawzi, he says, Qawluhu Ta'ala, Al-Hakum. He says, Qara'a Abu Bakr, Al-Siddiq. Ibn Abbas. Okay, I say this slow so you can write. Huh? Qara'a Abu Bakr as Siddiq. The Abu Bakr as Siddiq. He used to recite. Ibn Abbas. And Ibn Abbas. Wa Sha'bi. And as Sha'bi. Wa Abu Aliya. Wa Ibn Imran. Wa Ibn Imran. Wa Ibn Abi. Abla. Naam. We got those names. So we got Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Ibn Umar. Ibn Abbas. Ahwan. Barakallah. Ah, so, so, you see? Ayyuh, Barakallah fikum. Ibn Abbas. As Sha'bi. Abu Aliya. Ibn Imran. Wa Ibn Abi al Abla. Ain ba lam ta marbuta. طيب. They used to recite this word. They used to recite this word. أَأَلْ هَاكُمْ أَأَلْ هَاكُمْ أي بهمزتين مقصورتين على الاستفهام. They used to recite it with two hamzas. If you look now to the Arabic, that's why I had you bring the, the mushaf. You find one hamza. Al Hakum. Al Hakum. Now they were recited with two hamzas. Al Hakum. Al Hakum. Now, like, what does we what do we understand when it's recited with two hamzas? Is that we gain from this that a question is being asked. That a question is being asked. Now, because we know this hamza that they added was called the hamza al istifham. It is the hamza that's utilized to ask a question. Okay? A Hamza that's utilized to ask a question. Who could bring an example of this type of Hamza? Huh? Do you have do you have a pen? We say ah. We have a pen. So we understand from this we're asking a question. Okay? So now we have this now with two Hamzas. And who used to recite this like this? Give me two names. Yalla, huh? Abu Bakr and who else? Ibn Abbas. Ibn Umar. 
ما ابن عباس ايوه بارك الله فيك طيب ناو قرا معاويه اوكي نا معاويه ان عائشه رضي الله تعالى عنهما رضي الله رضي الله تعالى عن عن اصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اجمعين نعم Muawiyah and Aisha, they used to recite it. His go test now. Bihamzatin, I want you to, yani the Arab, listen, listen, listen now to the description. I want you to tell me how it was recited. Bihamzatin, wahida, mamduda, istifhaman, aida. Uh, again, uh. Ay, ay, is he right or is he wrong? He said, he said it was said, Al-Hakum Al-Hakum Al-Takakum ah, Is he right or is he wrong? Yeah. He's right Who agrees with the, with, the, with, the, with the young man? Oh man, you got scared Come on, tell me Who agrees? Again, I, I gave you the description again With one Hamza Memduda Memduda means it's extended, elongated One Hamza that is elongated and we know that Hamza that's Memdudah really is what? Hamza Taini, right? But it's elongated. al hakum Okay, so it's one Hamza that is elongated and you understand from it a question as well. Huh? Is he right? Now, nah. Example, like you, say, like you say to Yani, maybe your son with regards to his school, he said, ah, the Did you go to school? Did you go? Yani, like this, right? Wait, he's right. So they recited, al hakum also giving a question. Now, so now the one that says, okay, so what does al hakum mean? What does it mean now? What is the meaning of it? Right? Ibn Jawzi, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, al hakum. Now, ma'na al hakum. He said, al hakum meaning that you have been preoccupied and been made busy. Away from the obedience, away from the obedience of Allah and from His worship. That you have been preoccupied and you have been made busy away from the obedience of Allah and away from the worship of Allah. So that there's something now that has preoccupied the human being so much so that he neglects and he forgets about obeying Allah and he forgets about what? Worshipping Allah Ta'ala. So they will ask the question. Alhaqum this thing. Alhaqum this thing. Have you become preoccupied and busy away from the obedience of Allah and His worship? Now, so now what was this thing that preoccupied them and made them forget about the akhirah? Allah Ta'ala He says, At takathur. What is this thing that preoccupied them, made them forget about akhirah, made them forget about ayyu and now, made them forget about the meeting with their Lord? التكاثر نعم خيرا so now the one with عقل السليم the one with good intellect he say okay يا عمو what is the meaning of التكاثر right every edge of the sea and what is the meaning of it خير again we go back to the imma yeah شكل الجوزي إمام الجوزي said what he said that when it comes يعني وفي مراد بالتكاثر ثلاثة أقوال he said, and when it comes to what's intended by takathur, then we have three different opinions. He had three different statements. Now, he said the first opinion, the first statement about the meaning of takathur, he said, takathur bil amwali wal awlad. Takathur bil amwali wal awlad. He said, it is the gathering of what? Of money and of children. It's the gathering up of money and of children. Okay? So a person so preoccupied in his wealth and his money and having kids and all this thing, it diverts him from the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala and from the worship of Allah Ta'ala and obeying Allah Ta'ala. Now, this is the first opinion of what this means. And this was the opinion of Al-Hasan and other than him. Khair. The second opinion is that it means At-Tafakhuru bil qabail wal ashair that it was the competing and the competition when it came to the tribe and when it came to the family. So busy trying to outdo the other tribe and trying to outdo the, yani, the other families, then what? They had neglected and forgotten about the worship of Allah Ta'ala 
and the obedience of Allah Ta'ala. Now, the third opinion is that it means what? Atishagulu bil ma'ash wal tijara. Now, Atishagulu bil ma'ash wal tijara. Now, is that it means one becoming preoccupied with uh, making a living and trade in his business, his work, his job. Now, the one becoming preoccupied with uh, his occupation, making a living, for lack of a better term, and his uh, and merchandise uh, and commerce. This was the opinion of of uh, of uh, Bahak and other than him. Khair. So Abdullah ibn Abbas, the Turjuman al Quran, the explainer of the Quran. Uh, and I'm Hakala Dakara Yani Man Bukhari, the Sahihi, Nam, Wakal, Kali Man Bukhari, the Sahihi, Wakal ibn Abbas, at Takafur, Minel Amwali wa Aulad. He said that uh, Man Bukhari, he said that at Takafur, in his Sahihi, he said that Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said that at Takafur, it means from money and from children. But they become preoccupied from money and become preoccupied from children. A, they become preoccupied from the gathering up of wealth and children. They become preoccupied by what? By dunya. So now if we go back now to the recitation of, of Abu Bakr and likewise that of Muawiyah. Emma or takafur. We understand it means what? Have you become preoccupied away from the obedience of Allah and from the worship of Allah Ta'ala because of the gathering of money and children? Because of the gathering of wealth? Because of the pursuit of dunya? Has this led you, has this uh, blinded you from that meaning? Nah. Because there are people, there are individuals who have become blinded by this. They become blinded by dunya. And is there being blinded by this? Is this something that is particular to the kufar? While the Muslims are free from it? La. Nah. Rather the Muslims, they are also from the Muslims. Those who have become preoccupied by dunya. And they take it away from the akhirah. And if you want to look to each, each one of ourselves. And we know that the qiyamul layl can be at least what? One raka, right? One raka. It can at least be one raka. But how many times have the good of yourself said to you, maybe I should pray some qiyamul layl, even if it's before my sleep? And how often does the waswas or the evil of yourself come to you and say, hey, but you got to get up early tomorrow. You better just go to sleep. Alaysa kadhali? Bala. How often has this happened? But we know that one raka, it will prepare you for the meeting with your Lord. But the evil of yourself, because of your preoccupation with your job and with the making the money and the wealth, and, 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 and you say to yourself, no, let me get to sleep. And you know, the boss, man, I've been late a few times this week. He's been on my neck. He's going to write me up. Da, 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 da. Let me get to sleep so I can safeguard that. He safeguard that. And he lose the opportunity to put forth some good so when he meet his Lord. Have you become preoccupied by this money and by this children away from the obedience of Allah and away from the Torah? So now what does Allah Ta'ala say about this individual? Are they just be, are just yani, belied by this and that's it? They just become confused and yani, uh, has? Nah. It's not like that. Also, Hassan al-Basri, he said, Al-Hakum al-Takathur, eh, he said, Fil amwali wa awlaad. Like Ibn Abbas, he said that, the takathur it means in the children, and it means in the what? In the wealth. They become belied by this. They become fooled by this. They become tricked by this. Until when? Hatta zurtum al-maqabir. Until they zurtum al-maqabir will come, inshallah. So what that means. So Ibn Ibn Kathir, Imam Ibn Kathir, he said what in, in, in his in, in his opening up beginning in his explanation to this beautiful uh, tremendous surah, Imam Kathir he said what he said, Ya Taala, 
أشغلكم حب الدنيا ونعيمها وزهر و و و و وزهرتها عن طلب آخرة وبتغائها. He says, is is as if Allah Taala, Allah Taala is saying to you, have you become busy? Have you become preoccupied by the love of the dunya, huh? And the love of the of the of the bounties of the dunya, and from the and from the flowers and the fruits of the dunya, away from the akhir, away from trying to seek the akhir and wanting it. Have you become preoccupied in doing that by love of the dunya, huh? And then he says, "What hamadi bikum dalika hatta jaakum jaakum al maut." وزرتم المقابر وسرتم من أهلها. He said, "Has this be? Has have you been tricked in being fooled and being preoccupied with this dunya, seeking its seeking its bounties and its fruits? Has this made you preoccupied on the akhira and wanting the akhira, and you have been made persistent upon being in that situation of being preoccupied by dunya, so much so?" That day comes to you, death, until death comes to you. You're preoccupied so much with dunya until you die, and then you become of the people of the grave, and then you become of those who visit the grave, meaning from its people. You're dead in your grave. Have you become preoccupied to that extent? وفيما أخرجه مسلم وترمذي عن مطرف عن أبيه قال أتي قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يقرأ الهاكم التكاثر قال يقول ابن آدم ما لي ما لي قال صلى الله عليه وسلم وهل لك يا ابن آدم من مالك إلا ما أكلت فأفنيت أو لبست فأبليت أو تصدقت فأمضيت. He said that he came to upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he was reciting الهاكم التكاثر. In which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, the son of Adam he says. Mali, Mali, oh my wealth, my wealth, my money, my money. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, "And what do you have from your money, O oh son of Adam? Except for that which you have eaten and finished, or except for that which you have worn or put on and wore out, or from that which you have given in charity." And set forward. Now, so let's gain some more tawdih on this hadith. So, with the light of Allah, we go to Al Hafid Abu Ala Muhammad Muhammad Abdul Rahman. Now, Al Mubarak Furi. Huh? And this kalam is found. Now, is found in his the Sheikh's explanation, the Imam's explanation of as soon as Atul Madhi. Now. So if we go to the first part now, and the Sheikh Yani, he's he's giving the explanation as the as the the the, the wording comes in at Tirmidhi, which is slightly different from the wording in Muslim. Okay, so the Sheikh he says, "Wahal laka min malik," and what is from you from your money? The Sheikh he says, "What is meant by that? And what do you have from your money?" A, hal yahsilu laka min mal wa yanfa'u kafil mal. He said, "Do you gain, or uh, do you gain anything from your money, and are you benefited from your money? This is what's meant. Like, and what do you gain from your money, and what do you benefit from your money? Huh? Have you attained any gain from your uh, gain from your money, or any benefit from your money? Illa except, meaning that the only time you benefit really from your money is in these three different situations. Okay, this is the reality." You're chasing after this wealth. This is not really benefiting you. It only benefits you in these three situations only. He said, "Except illa ma illa ma tasadqta fa amdi." Except for that which you have put forward, now except for that sadqa, that charity which you have put forward. He said, "In the meaning of that is that you put it forward, and that it will last. It will be something lasting 
uh, that, that you put forward for yourself for the day of jaza, for the day when you meet your Lord, for your Muqiyama. Nah? Except for that what you put forward for that for that day. Okay? Or except, of course, for that which you have eat have, have that yeah, any food which you have eaten and you finished it, or that which you have worn and you wore it out. That's the only time you can't really benefit from your money. And this is the reality of the situation. So the Shaykh or yani the half of the Kathir, he brings a line of poetry inside of the explanation of this surah, and he says, He said that you belong to your money as long as you hold on to it. You think you own your money? La, you want to be hoary, you want to be niggly, you want to be stingy, you want to be miserly. Then your money controls you. You don't control your money. He said that you belong to your money as long as you hold on to it. Now, as long as you hold on, you hoard it, you belong to your money. He said, but your money shall belong to you if you spend it feasibly live. You see? If you spend it feasibly live, then it belongs to you. Why? Because now you come in Akhra and it's waiting there for you to benefit you. But you hold on to it, you hide it, you put it in a secret account, you put it in the fireproof box under your bed, in the shoe box under your pillow, Huh? Guns blazing, waiting. No, nobody taking this. And what happened? You die, and then other human beings split it up and benefit from it. And then you come here with Qiyana, what you got? Nothing. You ain't got nothing. It didn't benefit you. You don't have it. It don't belong to you. But what happens? You belong to it. It uses you. So who's really the boss now? Ah, you see? And this is this is the danger of these things. This is how the, you know, the shaitan it comes and deludes you with stuff that you don't really own. You don't own it. You can become deluded. You see? But you own it and take possession if you do what? Spend the feast of it. Now you now you now you now it's yours. Now 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 it belongs to you. Now you'll benefit from it. Now, so Allah Ta'ala he says, Hatta Zurutumul Makabir until you yani, have, have until you visit the graves. What is the meaning of until you visit the graves? Imam al Baghawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said in his in his tafsir, A Hatta mittum. He said it means until you die and it have been buried in your graves. This is what's meant. Until you visit the graves. Meaning what? Until you die and you have been put in your graves. Meaning that a person he will be deluded by dunya, deluded by money, deluded by children, so much so until he die. Until he die. So some of the people from the past of Salaf, they used to say that the dunya is like wine. It's like khamar. Okay? Whoever becomes intoxicated, whoever gets drunk off the dunya, he won't sober up until Yom Al-Qiyam. He won't sober up until Akhirah, until death come. Malakumot taking the soul. Then you realize, oh, I, I should have, I need more time. Send me back. Verily, I'm going to make sadaqah and be of the right. I need more time. Now you remember, but it's too late. It's too late. So they become deluded until they have reached the maqabir. So Allah Ta'ala, He says what? Kalla. Kalla. No way. What is the meaning by this no way? Ibn Jawzi said in his, in his tafsir, he said, Qala zajjaj wahiya rad'un. Naam. Meaning that this is yani, a prevention. Rad'un. That this kalla is to prevent and to also do what? What ten be. Naam. Wahiya Rad'un wa tanbihun that it is a it is to prevent you, but it's also to wake you up. Kalla. No way. No. No what? What did we understand by that? The Shaykh he says, Al Ma'ana Lais al Amur Alladi Yam Bari and Yakunu Alehi Takathur. He said, What's meant is that this affair in which you're on, it doesn't necessitate that that the any that you should be trying to gather all this stuff. It's not like that. The reality doesn't necessitate that you should be trying to gather a money and gather up children. That you should be trying to get up, gather up dunya. You want more and more dunya. This is not the situation. This is not what it calls for. So Allah Ta'ala says, Kalla! No! No way. It's not like that. And then Allah Ta'ala, He follows up with what? He follows up with something, Ya Ikhwah, Subhanallah Al-Azim. If we were just sitting and contemplate on this, and yani it's enough, man, to give you gray hairs. Allah Ta'ala says, no way. This is a threat from Allah. 
No way. You're going to know. I mean, if you don't know now, you're going to know. Sofa ta'lamun. If you don't know now, if you become deluded now in dunya, you're going to know. No way. It's not supposed to be like that. But you know what? You're going to come to know. You'll see. You'll see. This is a threat. The Imam said, Hada wa'idun. He said, This is a threat. This is a threat from who? From me? From you? La. This is a threat from Allah. Woman astaqal hadith in Allah. No one who's more truthful than Allah Ta'ala in speech. Nobody. If Allah Ta'ala threaten you, you better not be yani. You better not take the characteristics that Allah Ta'ala say He's gonna get you if you if you do that stuff. Why? Allah is gonna get you. He's going to enforce that threat. It's a promise. It's going to happen. If you become deluded, kalla. So So how do we understand now so The Shaykh says, when ma'na so fatalamun, aqibatu takathur, aw takathurikum, wa tafakhurikum, iza nuzila bikum al mawt. He said that, oh, iza nuzila bikum al mawt. He said that verily. What's the meaning of you going to know? He said you're going to know the evil end result of your collecting and being st- and trying to gather of money and of children and of your comp- and competing in these matters when death comes upon you. When death comes, then you're going to know. But if you look now at the ayah, we have kalla sofa ta'lamu. ثم كلا سوف تعلمون. It comes twice. It comes twice. Now remember, we have said that in the Arabic language, never does something come twice having the same purpose. Okay. Listen now. Never does something come twice having the same purpose. So the second one is not going to have the same purpose as the first one. Okay. Either it'll be to emphasize the second one, what the first one was saying, or it'll come with a new meaning. So now what do the imma say about these two ayat? Kalla, sofa ta'lamun. Thumma kalla, sofa ta'lamun. What do they say? What do we understand the meanings of these of these of these two ayat? They, uh, they say, Waqila, al ilm al awwal, al ilm al awwal yaqa and the nazul al mawt. That the first one, kalla sofa ta'lamun, know that you're gonna know. They say that this knowing will come to you when you die. When you die, now you're gonna know. But that, is that it? That's it? La. They say, and then the second one is when you get thrown and put in your grave. Then you're going to know more. When that interrogation comes from them angels, then you're going to know better. Huh? So, kalla. So, for ta'lamun, when you die, you're going to know. If you would be lied, if, if you were tricked, you were duped, you didn't know, you forgot, when you die, you're going to remember. And then when you get put in your grave, you're going to remember again. When you die, you're going to know. And then when you get put in your grave, you're going to know again. Huh? So then, Allah Ta'ala he goes on and he says, Kalla lo ta'lamuna ilm al Huh? He says, No, if you were to know with a, 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 a certain knowledge. Imam al Baghawi he said in his tafsir, A ilm al yaqeenan wa adafu ilm ila al yaqeen ka qawlihi ta'ala. It's the Surah Al Waqi'ah. He said that Allah Ta'ala he has he has he has combined knowledge with certainty. He said, like he had done so in the verse from Surah Al Waqi'ah, it's the 95th verse, where Allah Ta'ala says, Lahu al haqqul yaqeen. And it is the certain knowledge on it. It is a certain knowledge. He said, and Jawab al This is for the Arabic people now, the Arabic books, those studying Arabic, the students. You know that when you say low, you need a jawab. You say low, you need an answer to that, to that, you know, that low. That kalla if. Okay? Nah? That kalla, no, if. Huh? If they were to know this. So, so, so what is the answer to that if? What is the answer to that if, right? He says, El Jawab low, the answer, the answer, the sentence that answers that if, he said, Mahdhuf. It has been taken away, it's not there. It's understood, but it's not there. So what do we understand then? What is what's understood? What the ulama explained to us? They say, Imam Baghawi, he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, A, لو تعلمون علما 
يقينا لا شغلكم ما تعلمون عن التكاثر والتفاخر سبحان الله الله أكبر he said what he said what does this mean كلا لو تعلمون عن اليقين no if they knew with a certain knowledge if they knew what what's the answer for if he said what's understood by this is what is that if you all knew Listen now, this is to you and to me, and to me and to you, to me first, to me first, huh? then to you all. He said, if you all knew with a certain knowledge, with a certain knowledge that, or, or with a certain knowledge, it said, you who have busied yourselves, you would have busied yourselves with what you know. He said that if you were to know with a certain knowledge, then you would busy yourselves with what you know. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to come to what's understood of what we know from the statement of uh, Qatada. But he says that if you were to know with a certain knowledge, then you would have busied yourself with what you know as opposed to the gathering of wealth and competing in wealth and children. That if you were to know with a certain knowledge, then you would have busied yourselves with what you know as opposed to the gathering of wealth and competing in wealth and children. So now what is that certain knowledge? Qatada he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, kunna natahaddath an ilm al yaqeen. He said that we used to speak about this certain knowledge. We used to talk about the certain knowledge. What is it? He said that certain knowledge is what? An ya'lam, anna Allah ba'athahu ba'd al mawt. He said that that certain knowledge is that an individual he knows with a certainty that Allah is going to raise him up after he's dead. That he's going to have to go back to Allah's time. This is that certain knowledge. So if he said, so if we were to know that certain knowledge that we're going to be raised after we die, then we will busy ourselves with that reality and we will not busy ourselves with the gathering of wealth and the gathering of uh, children. So then Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, لَتَرَوُونَ الْجَحِيمِ That verily, most definitely, you're going to see the jahim. Now, قَالَ حَافِذْ إِمْنَ كَثِيرٍ الْحَافِذْ إِمْنَ كَثِيرٍ رحم الله Ta'ala, he said, هَذَا تَفْسِرُ وَعِيدٍ الْمُتَقَدَّمْ He said that this is the explanation of the threat that preceded. Huh? Of the threat that preceded. What was the threat that preceded? Who remembers? No, that was a threat, though. Huh? I heard it. I heard it. Huh? Ah, so for Talamun. Now he said, "This is the this is the this is the answering of the threat that you had just been threatened with." He said, "And that is Allah Taala statement." Kalla, so for Talamun. ثم كلا سوف تعلمون. He said, توعدهم بهذا الحال. That Allah Taala, He has warned them, He has threatened them with a threatening promise of this situation. And what's that situation here? رؤية النار. And that is that they will have to look at the fire. Allah is threatening them that they're gonna have to look and see and face the fire. He said, التي إذا Zafarat. He said that this fire, that when it groans, that when it groans, Zafratan, Wahidatan, and when it groans, just one groan. Listen, that when this fire groans, just one groan. Huh? He said, Khawara kullu malakin muqarra wa nabi mursal ala rukbatayi. من ال هما م م من المهابة والعظمة ومعاينة الأحوال على ما جاء به أثر مروي في ذلك. He said that that when this fire just makes one groan, one groan. He said that every angel that's close. And every prophet that has been sent will fall to their knees out of fear and out of reverence and due to an examination 
of that situation. He said, and this has come in, 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 in this has come in those narrations that, that have been narrated. This meaning that just one groan, it will cause the angels and the NBI to fall to their knees. And Allah Ta'ala is saying that the that, that the one who has become deluded by dunya, he will have to do what? He will have to look at it. Not just hear it, he's gonna have to look at it. He's gonna have to face it. You see? And is that it? They just face it? Because this is the reality that we have to return back to Allah Ta'ala. Is that just it? We return to Allah, but then Allah Ta'ala tells us something which is extremely scary. It's frightening. It's frightening. Allah Ta'ala, He says what? Thumma la tus'alunna yawma idhan na'anil na'im. He said, and then on that day, you're going to be asked about the na'im. Subhanallah. We're going to be asked about the na'im. What is the na'im? See, that's the next question. What is this na'im that we're going to be asked about? Qala ibn Zawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala fi tafsiri, he said, اختلفوا على هذا سؤال عام أم لا He said that the, that the ulama they differ with regards to this question Is it a question that's going to be general or not? He said على قولين They break, they have two different opinions He said أحدهما أنه خاص للكافر وللكفار He said the first is that this is only particular to the kufar and not the Muslims that only the kufar will be asked about the na'im and not the Muslims huh? he said وَقَالَهُ الْحَسَنِ and this was the opinion of Hassan he said the second opinion is that it is general عام 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 is that it's general that everybody will be asked about it the kafir and the Muslim will be asked about the na'im okay he said this was a statement of Qatada huh? he said and with regards to the tafsir of Na'im, then you have 10 different opinions. Okay? 10 different opinions. Inshallah Ta'ala, we're going to run through them. Inshallah, because it's benefit. And you understand better. Everybody free your brain. And come with me. Huh? The first one is that the Na'im that you're going to be asked about. That verily you're going, verily most definitely, no doubt, you're going to be asked about what? The first opinion is that you're going to be asked about safety and good health. That you're going to be interrogated by Allah Ta'ala about the safety, huh? Anytime you went to bed in peace and security and in good health. Okay, you're going to be asked about that. The second opinion is what? The second opinion is that the na'im is cold water. You sit down, you drink that cold water, you're going to be questioned about it. The third one is that إِنَّهُ خُبْزٌ بُرُّ Is that it is, the third opinion is that it is, it is, it is, it is that, it is that nice bread and spring water. You're going to be asked about that nice bread and what? And spring water. It's important now, I need everybody to jot these down. The fourth is that أَنَّهُ مَلَاذَ الْمَأْكُولِ وَالْمَشْرُوبِ Is that we're going to be asked about the pleasure and the joy we got from food and drink. Subhanallah. That Allah Ta'ala will question us about yani, the food and the drink. So you have that drink that you love. Pepsi, Snapple, Arizona iced tea. And you drink it and you enjoy it. Allah will ask you about that. That food you love, Allah Ta'ala will question you about that. The fifth is that أَنَّهُ صِحَّ الْأَبْدَانِ وَالْأَسْمَاءِ وَالْأَسْمَاءِ is that it is the good health of the body, the hearing, and of this of the seeing. That Allah Ta'ala will question you about your health. Allah Ta'ala He will question you. That 
That Allah Ta'ala, he will question you about your hearing. That Allah Ta'ala, he will question you about your seeing. Think, contemplate about this. How many of us give our, give our health away? We don't use it for the ibadah of Allah. We give our hearing to things that are haram. We give our seeing to that which is haram. This is what you're going to be asked about. The sixth is that the na'im that we're going to be interrogated and questioned about by our Lord. Annahu al that we're going to be asked and interrogated about what? About our lunch and our dinner. What we ate at lunchtime, what we ate at dinner time and enjoyed so much. We're going to be questioned about these things. The seventh is that we're going to be questioned about al-sihha wal That Allah Ta'ala, He will question us about our good health and about our spare time. What do we do with it? Did we spend it worshiping Allah? Did, 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 did we spend it seeking knowledge? Or did we spend it in foolishness, in haram? What did we use it for? The eighth is that with the meaning of na'im is كل شيء من لذة الدنيا that the na'im is everything you enjoy from dunya everything pleasurable from dunya you're going to be asked about everything enjoyable from dunya you're going to be questioned about it's important يعني يا إخوة بارك الله تعالى فيكم that we contemplate on these things because you have some of us we find enjoyment in haram we find enjoyment and pleasure in haram. Allah Ta'ala will ask you about that. The ninth, أَنَّهُ إِنْعَامُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ لِإِرْسَالِ Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم The ninth is that we're going, that Naeem is the blessing that Allah Ta'ala put on His creation by sending them Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم you see, this is what we're going to be asked about. Do you have from the Muslims those who don't want his sunnah? Oh, ya'adhu billah. You see, refuge on Allah from that. Amen. And the tenth, أَنَّهُ سُنُوفِ النِّعَمِ is that it's all types of blessings. It's all types of blessings. This is what we're going to be asked about. So now we have this long list of ten. From fresh water, from good bread, from food, from lunch, from dinner. Which one is it? Which one? Which one is a naim? We have a Najawzi. Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, first with regards to whether this is for the Muslims only, or for the Kufa only, or for everyone. The Sheikh, the Imam, he said, was Sahih Annahu Am. أنه عام في كل نعيم. He said, "What's with regards to which ten of it is this? Because these are all ten from the from the an'am of Allah Taala. Nah, these are all ten from the ni'am. Huh? From the ni'am. He said, and which of it is it? He said that is authentic. He said, what's 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 correct is that it includes every ni'am." These that were mentioned in other from the ni'am. It includes every bounty, every blessing. It includes everything. Allah Ta'ala will interrogate us about it. Everything. Everything that we found as a blessing, Allah Ta'ala, He will interrogate us about it. So let the one who finds pleasure in the haram be warned. Let the one who finds pleasure in the haram be warned. Let the one who finds pleasure in the haram be warned that he will have to stand in front of his Lord and answer why he found pleasure in music why he found pleasure in gambling why 
why he found pleasure in pornography. Why he found pleasure in drinking liquor. Why he found pleasure in smoking marijuana. All of us knows the evil that we do. Think to yourself, to your most despicable of deeds, that you find pleasure in having to stand in front of your Lord and be asked about that thing. Let us think about this. And then the Shaykh, he comments now about whether it is for the kuffar only or it is for the, the Muslims too. The Shaykh, he says, وَعَامٌ فِي جَمِيعِ الْخَلْقِ He said, and this, this goes for everyone, all of the creation. They're going to be asked. The kafir and the Muslim. The kafir and the mu'min. They will be asked about these things. They will be asked about these things. He said, فَالْكَافِرْ يُسْأَلْ تَوْبِيخًا إِذَا لَمْ يَشْكُرْ He said, the kafir, he will be asked about these bounties and he will be rebuked for not thanking the one who bestowed these bounties upon him, meaning Allah Ta'ala. He'll be asked about these bounties and then he'll be rebuked for not thanking Allah for these bounties that Allah Ta'ala has given him. And for also what? And for not singling out Allah Ta'ala alone in worship. They'll be rebuked for not thanking Allah and for not establishing a tawheed. They will be rebuked for this. So all this, all the all the things that they found pleasure will be brought up and they will be rebuked for this. Well mu'min yusal an shukriha. And the Muslim he'll be asked to see whether or not he was thankful. Whether or not he was thankful. You were given health. You were given wealth. What'd you do with it? Were you thankful? Did you fast when you were healthy? Did you make extra salah when you were healthy? Did you stand up at night when you were healthy? Did you help your brothers when you were healthy? What? What did you do with your health? What did you do with your money? What do you do to all these things? What, what have you done with these things that Allah Ta'ala has blessed you with? Have you wasted them? Have you squandered them? What have you done? Allah Ta'ala has given us everything. What have we done? To show our gratitude. Because gratitude is not something which is just by the word. It's also by actions. It's not just by words, but it's by actions. Do our actions show that we're grateful? Or do they show that we're not grateful? Each and every one of us knows his own how. He knows his own condition. Let us look to ourselves. Let us see the fault within ourselves. Let us weigh ourselves before we are weighed. And if we find in us anything that is bad, let us change. Let us change it. These are the things that we're going to be interrogated about. So, ala kulli hal ya ikhwa, let us not be from those who have become deceived by this dunya. Let us not be of those who have become deceived and drunken by the wine of dunya. So much so that they will not wake up until they have gone back to the, until they have reached the graves. So Allah Ta'ala, He says, أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَافُرُ حَتَّى زُرْتُمُ الْمُقَابِرُ كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ كَلَّا لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِينَ ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذًا عَنِ النَّعِينَ Allah Ta'ala, he says, have you become preoccupied, or he says, you have become preoccupied with the gathering of wealth and children until you have reached the graves and become from its in, 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 uh, inhabitants. Verily, it should not be like this and you will come to know. Then again, you shall come to know. 
And if you were to know the reality, then of course you would not have busied yourselves with this. If you were to know with a good knowledge or with a certain knowledge that verily you are going to see the Jahannam. And then we had neglected to mention this ayah. And verily you're going to see it with a certain eye, meaning the eye of your, that's inside your head. It's not going to be no figurative seeing, but you're going to see it with your eye inside of your head. And then on that day, or then on that day, you'll be asked about every single bounty, every single thing that you found pleasure in. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us of those who find pleasure in the halal. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us of those who are, uh, who are thankful to him and who show that thanks in word as well as action. We ask Allah Ta'ala he does not make us of those who are deceived by the life of this world. We ask Allah to make us of those who work for the akhirah and who not forget our meeting and our appointment that we're going to have with our Lord. We ask Allah that he makes us of those who are prepared and who ready themselves because verily death is drawing near. Are you ready? Hada aqulakoli hada wa astaqfullah ali wa lakum wa jazakum allahu khayyam.